Today, finally, after eight years, I bought a new desktop computer and that is the Mac Studio. This is the latest and greatest from Apple. Today, we're gonna to be unboxing the Mac Studio, hooking it up to my triple monitor display. I'm gonna show you a couple of accessories that I got for this thing, as well as my first impressions of the Mac Studio. Since today is the first day I'm opening it, literally, I'm gonna be opening the seal right now. First impressions is just the packaging, man. This thing is... And this thing kind of pops open. This packaging is just incredible. They probably spent like, you know, 30, 40 dollars on this packaging. And you get a power cable in the box. Nice braided power cable. That's pretty much it. But just look at this box from the inside, man. It's got like a floating suspension system that clips in here. So that's the thing with the Mac Studio. You don't get anything else in the box. It's just the power cable and the computer. You're expected to get everything else on your own, including the keyboard and the mouse and the monitor and everything. As I said in my previous videos, I was a big fan of the iMac. I prefer desktop computers to laptops for hardcore work. I love having laptops, don't get me wrong. Uh, they're great for portability, getting work done on the move, but I love my, you know, in-place desk setup. I use my Macs as a server. I do video editing on them. I do audio editing on them. I prefer my 300 as setup. And I like to connect a lot of different accessories to this thing. I've got three hardest plugged into my iMac. I've got a DAC, I've got a cam link as well, and a big USB hub with a bunch of different accessories connected to this thing. I needed the extra IO, and that's why I didn't pick up an M1 Mac Mini. I was hoping to get a new iMac, but this is apparently the next best thing. So let's check it out. Ooh. So I'm not going to bore you with all the technical details about this because tons of YouTubers have already made content about that. But yeah, you got two USB ports in the front, you got a HDMI, you got two USB A ports, you got four Thunderbolt ports and a power jack. Plus you got the SD card slot in the front. So that's just perfect for me. The one I got, this is the M1 Max. 32 core with one terabyte of hard disk space. And I did get a two TB Thunderbolt hard disk to connect to this. This is gonna give me two and a half gigs per second speed on this thing, almost equal to the internal hard drive speed of this. That's the beauty of Thunderbolt. You can get really fast accessories to connect and I've been living the USB-A life all this time. My iMac didn't have any USB-C ports, forget about Thunderbolt ports. So I needed to upgrade. That was the unboxing, not much to it. And I'm gonna be hooking it up to my triple monitor desk setup over here. And let's set this guy up and see what it can do. So this is what the stand actually looks like uh, when it's kind of disassembled. So you can see we have one rod in the middle for the main monitor and then the two side monitors. I want to keep this as invisible as possible. So you can see I have like a bunch of cables coming here. This was where the iMac was. Now I think I'm going to keep my Mac Studio on the side over here. Keep it below, you know, have it a bit of a showpiece. So I have to run all my cables to the table behind. So I just bought a new 32 inch monitor for this setup over here. So it's the LG 4K HDR Ergo 32 inch monitor, which I'll be putting over here. Now, if you guys want to see more details about that monitor, I already did a review about it. I was testing it out on my MacBook Air and it's a phenomenal monitor. I just switched it out a glossy front instead of the anti-reflective coating or whatever. I feel like every monitor has this anti-reflective coating except for Apple's monitors. And that's why Apple's monitors look so good. This panel is amazing, but when you look at it next to the iMac, because the iMac has a glossy monitor, it looks a little bit more crisp, you know? So I just wish they had an option with a glossy monitor. I had this T700, which I was editing off of. It's an amazing drive, but this one is not quite as fast as this one. I just picked this up. This is the Sabrent rocket SSD. And this one can go up to two and a half thousand megabits per second, which is almost the same speed as the internal hard drive. This one's two terabytes. And it connects over Thunderbolt directly to the Mac. So this is gonna be my new editing hard drive. And I love the fact that it's two terabytes. It gives me plenty of space to edit tons of projects before I can transfer everything to long-term storage.
here guys as you can see the table is a bit of a mess but everything's hooked up I have used almost all the ports at the back except one Thunderbolt port which is nice so I have some expandability in the front I have two USB-C and the SD card slot. I have this little hub over here, so two more USB slots and a micro SD card reader if I need it. And my LG dongle. This thing needs to be close to the mouse, by the way. That gives you the best performance. That's why I use this thing. My DAC is plugged into. All three monitors are set. Hopefully this one's connected by HDMI. This one is USB-C and then this one is connected by USB-C to display port. So let's see if all that works. We've got one, two and three. Except my mouse, I've heard there's some problems with Logitech mouse, but pick it up and check it out. I might lower this monitor down a little bit more. Slightly. Alright guys, I'm having the stupidest problem ever. My keyboard is not pairing with the Mac Studio. I have an original Apple keyboard, but it just doesn't seem to be connecting to this device. This is the keyboard from my previous iMac, so that might have something to do with it, but it's just so frustrating. I can't set up the computer and there's no Bluetooth option to let me connect this keyboard. I paired it with my phone, it works fine, but I don't have a wired keyboard in my house. Okay, figured out the solution. This has to be the most convoluted way ever to set up a keyboard, but what you have to do is right click, go to substitutions, so substitutions, text preferences, and there you will find this Bluetooth connection thing and I was able to connect it. Man, that sucks. Okay, so I'm finally in. All good. And I can barely hear anything. I mean, I can tell that the fans are on, but it's not loud at all. So it's been three, four days since I got the system. Initially, I was pretty disappointed because I was having a lot of issues. The performance wasn't as good as my M1 MacBook Air, which was honestly really surprising. And, you know, I was having stutters while generally like watching YouTube videos even playing in Final Cut. Everything seemed to be really stuttery and unsmooth. In some cases, even worse than my iMac. So I was really surprised. So I figured either I've got a bad Mac Studio or there's something else wrong because I set this Mac up from scratch. I didn't import it from another machine or anything. Turns out my DAC, which is almost 20 years old, is not compatible or doesn't seem to have the drivers for M1. And that was causing just the system to crash overall. So that's why the YouTube videos weren't playing. Anytime I needed to use anything with audio, this thing would pretty much crash the system over and over again. It was working, but just I think there was some kind of driver conflict or something going on. And as soon as I unplugged it, the performance has been amazing. Quick couple of thoughts about this machine. So the hard disk in this is insanely fast, twice as fast as the MacBook Air. So on this machine, I'm getting benchmarks of about 5,000 megabits per second, which is double the speed of what I'm getting on the MacBook Air and double of the Sabrent M.2 SSD, which I have connected to the system, which is extremely fast. I'm getting around two and a half thousand Mbps on that as well running through Thunderbolt. Final Cut Pro performance has been absolutely amazing ever since I removed that DAC. It is buttery smooth on the timeline and it's given me a quality of life improvement. On my previous iMac and even on the iMac Air, if I had more than one stream of 4K, I had to run it in performance mode just so that the computer could keep up with things. And basically that means the video I'm seeing while I'm editing looks like a 720p video or even lower quality. And then when you export it, you get the full quality, but it's a little difficult sometimes to tell if something's in focus or not. So that's been a big quality of life improvement. Switching to the Mac Studio, I can see everything in 4K as I'm editing it. Another thing that it unlocked for me is OBS performance. So a lot of times I used to record my cam link through my camera over here, the A6000, and I used to use the mic and record video directly onto my hard disk using OBS. Before I had to run OBS at a really low quality setting just so that the computer could handle it. Otherwise I'd skip frames and the whole computer would come to a grinding halt. Now with this machine, I can record at the highest quality without skipping a beat. I mean, like I've been monitoring the performance metrics on this. I haven't hit the RAM ceiling even once. 
and I don't think I've even come to 50% of the GPU usage, about 60% of the CPU usage, even in my heaviest workloads, exporting massive 4K multicam clips. What I used to get on the MacBook Air, which I'm insanely impressed with, first of all, is being like doubled or two and a half timed on this machine. So I export that used to take me 10 minutes, now it takes me two, three minutes on this thing. Affinity Photo and Designer have been insanely fast. And especially if you use like AI tools like Lumina Photo and stuff like that, which I use sometimes to remove the backgrounds or to change the sky in photographs. All those AI tasks, I think because this thing has a machine learning engine inside it, it just eats through that stuff, you know? So there's a lot of things in the Mac Studio which is beyond just the main specs that you see on paper, like the clock speed, number of cores, and things like that. This M1 Max processor inside it has a dedicated video encoding engine which speeds up workflow and video editing software like crazy, especially if you're exporting to H.264, H.265. Since I can't use my DAC anymore, I've been using my headphones with the inbuilt headphone jack on the Mac Studio. And I must say the preamps are super clean. You don't hear any noise, any static. It sounds absolutely great. I have ordered a new DAC after 20 years of using this one. Picking up the Focusrite 2i2 because I like recording guitar pieces and singing and stuff. I enjoy doing that stuff, making little music videos. So I need a digital audio interface. Speaking of Logic, I did dabble with Logic on this and my logic usage is not insanely crazy, but I do use some of the plugins like the auto tune function and a few other heavy plugins. And this thing just like destroys all that. Like you don't even think like you're using the machine. And that's been my overall impression with the Mac Studio as well. Any tasks that I throw at it, including web browsing, audio editing, video editing, doing some light 3D work, coding, everything has just been super smooth on it. I've been emulating Windows 11 preview program, the ARM version of Windows through Parallels. Super smooth, nothing to complain about. This computer is overkill for most of the tasks that I use it for. And the good thing about that is I know that this machine's probably gonna last me for the next six to seven years, if not more, easily because I have more than enough headroom to handle most of the tasks. Like even if I ever upgrade this camera to an 8K camera, which I don't think I'll be doing, but if I did, I know this machine would be able to handle it. If I did decide to produce higher production audio or get into 3D animation, or if I decided to get into building games or something like that, like this computer is gonna more than easily be able to handle any kind of workload that I want to throw at it. And that's one of the things that this iMac, which I have lying on the floor over here, unlocked for me. I don't think I'd ever get into video editing unless I had a machine that made it so easy for me to get into it. I don't think I would have enjoyed audio editing as much, but you know, GarageBand on the iMac just made it so simple to use. And that's what really pulled me into the Apple ecosystem, you know, just giving me access to all these cool things at the touch of my fingers. And now with the Mac Studio has just gone to a different level. Anyway guys, that's it for my first impressions of the Mac Studio. I'm gonna play with it some more over the next couple of weeks and probably give a long-term review after a couple of months. So if you guys did like this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.